No wallet to hold your cash and cards, no belt to hold up your pants, no problem. Enter the $5,000 Roseanneville giveaway by signing up for the email list for a chance to win a wallet, camera harness, belt, guilties, and more. Ends April 3rd. 55 winners, 55 prizes, 55 products, and 55 tries. So doing a quick NDC update. If you don't know what these are, this was a, a little gift from NYX that they made up for me after I think the Indy 2, somewhere between the Indy 2 and Indy 3, where, you know, it's, they just... For whatever reason, hooked me up with a really cool pair of Cordovan boots, and uh, I think as a, as a thank you for the collaborations, the videos we've done for him. Because with Nick's, we've had videos that have gotten over well over millions of views, and uh, we've worked together for a long time and had a really good working relationship. So it's really cool when these brands uh, see the good that we're doing, and sometimes hooks up with a really cool pair of Cordovan boots. And if you don't know what I mean by NDC, I'll show you the indie, some of the indies. So this is a the indie one. Yeah, toe cap, lineman patch, contrasted leathers. Everyone hated it at first. You can't do two-tone boots, it's, it's so ugly. And then like a year later, everyone's like, bring back the indie ones. So kind of how it goes with collaborations. People, people don't like seeing stuff that's new to them for whatever reason. Then we got the indie twos. Changed the lineman patch. We designed this lineman patch uh, just to try to make something really unique and different and wanted to run dual lineman patches and without the toe cap. We didn't do a structure toe on this one because I like that little extra bulk through on that tactical heel counter. Very nice. And then the most recent Indy, the Indy 3. So a whole new spin on it. We did the lace to toe, double vamp, still with this lineman patch we designed. Still with the tactical toe or a <laughs> heel counter, uh, different sole combination. You know, just it's all like this whole the indie series is all about just making the most extreme boot that you can make, and still have it be wearable for a mostly everyday boot. And so it's just it's a really fun series that we do of, of boot collaborations. And so having one made out of cordovan was really cool, because it was like taking what usually is reserved for some of the finest, finest <laughs> in quotations, finest dress boots and high-end handmade boots. They usually usually save cordovan for this style of boot because it's not really a work leather because it's so stinking expensive. And there's some claims about it being some of the most durable leather in the world, some of the, the uh, toughest leather in the world, and I'll kind of go over that, but you usually don't see a work boot out of it. So there's a really cool angle on this Indy series. So in this video, I kind of want to go through some of the pros and some of the cons I noticed while working these boots, you know, on the trails and doing a little bit of work in them and just beating them up and just kind of seeing how they perform. So let's go through pros first. And then at the end of the video, because I haven't really touched these, you can see they're still dusty and all dirty. I'm going to take them back to the line finisher, give them a nice buff so you can see the before and afters. So let's start with pros. Hey everybody, this is Brody and our good friend Manny the Mannequin from Roseanneville. Today we want to tell you guys a little bit about our EDC boot pocket kit. Now our EDC boot pocket kit comes with three pockets, the small knife pocket, the medium knife pocket, and the storage pocket. The dimensions on the storage pocket are about two and one eighth by two and a half inches, just enough to comfortably and snugly fit a card. One really cool thing about our boot pocket kit is it allows you to keep your pockets clear of knives and cards and wallets, and instead keep your pockets clear for more important things like A1 steak sauce, or stick of butter. We offer these pockets in all of our leather options. We also have begun to accrue quite a few really cool boot leathers. So if you need a couple extra pockets so you can keep a stick of butter, some A1 steak sauce in your pants pockets, go to our website, check out our EDC pocket kit. Super awesome product. Check them out below. We will see you and your boot pockets later. I've got a boot pocket, you've got a boot pocket. Put cash in there. Roseanneville, buy one. First pro is it's just beautiful. This is a beautiful shell cordovan by uh, Italia Tosc Toscana Italia. And it's just it's this beautiful marbled shell. You can see right here on the quarter how pretty that is. And we'll put some before and after shots of how much they've changed color since I first got them because they've darkened up quite a bit. But especially this panel right here, that's so pretty. It looks like a just like a cow, really, you know, like the spots on a cow. You know, on this side, you got a little more marbling there, a little more marbling there, and you can see how it's rolling and folding. You don't get those same hard wrinkles that you get on a regular leather. See if you can see that on the camera. 
kind of can't see it because it's still covered in dirt. You see all these hairline wrinkles? That doesn't happen in Cordovan, and that's part of why people love it so much. And that's why this boot, when we get it shined up, it's gonna look, it's almost gonna look like a rubber boot because it's so perfectly even and it just doesn't wrinkle. It's just really cool stuff. And I just, I like how it's rolling and folding over the ankle and even around the toe. Cordovan is magical stuff. I don't care what anyone says. Some people are like, oh, it's overhyped. I'm like, okay, or it's the coolest leather you can get. One of the two. The next pro of this is cr it's crazy how much it shines up. And I'll show you, like I said, at the end. And I've shined these a couple times just for fun because it's so, it's so crazy how fast this comes back to like a mirror finish after being beat up on the trails and working. The uh, other pros that I just like about this kind of boot generally is I like when the heel, this midsole heel area starts folding up into the counter. I just, that's something I really like about this style of boot. It, it's not even that, I'm sure it protects it and does some things. I just like how it kind of forms to itself, you know, compare that to the ND2s. Just a fun little thing. Something I did in this, this pair of boots that I, I occasionally do from time to time, just, just to mix it up. So I, I broke both these laces. And so I started tying them up and doing all these knots down the front here. And then I just was like, most of the time I'm wearing these, I'm just kind of kicking around in them. I'm just gonna do little shorty laces. And so when I tie these on this boot, I only go to like the second eyelet basically. And so it's, it kind of makes them really easy to put on and take off. And this side, I went a little bit higher. Let's, I'll get this laced up for you. Like that. So you can see, you know, it's just kind of a unique way of doing a boot. I like kind of how my uh, pants stack on top of that open shaft. I like the way it flexes. And really the reason I did it was one of the first cons is because Cordovan's not nearly as thick and as strong as regular leather, it, it kinks really easily. So right here you can see at the heel, that thing just started kinking pretty much immediately. And that dug right into the back of my Achilles on both sides. And so, so part of this video is gonna be like, why Cordovan does not work as a work boot leather, even though it has all these claimed attributes. And that's part of it, is they just don't hold the same structure as regular leathers. So when you need lots of support, Cordovan is not the support leather, because you can see how it collapsed and can cause pressure points and pinch points. You know, over here, it looks totally fine and it really doesn't cause a lot of pain. You can even see some of like the stretching over here that's looking really cool but it kinks really easily. And that's kind of annoying. And that's part of why I did the short lacing because if I tightened these up all the way, it was just even more force pushing that down into my Achilles tendon. The next one is, I, this is not my fault. I'm saying this is 100% not my fault, but these smell fishy. I think it's, I think it's this Cordovan. It, they just smell fishy. I think they brine this Cordovan, maybe that, you know, that the salt and maybe, I don't know, it just smells fishy. And they smelled fishy when I first got them, just a little bit, but if I leave in my car and it's hot, even just like for an hour, the whole car smells like kind of fishy leather. If I wear them and I'm getting really sweaty, like I went on a hike last night in these to kind of refresh my thoughts on them. And I could smell them just walking out the trail. I could smell like wafting up. I got, I got pretty sweaty, but yeah, that was that. And that's one of the differences that I've noticed between Horween Shell Cordovan and this uh, Italia Toscana. I can't remember what it's called. Let me look it up. Toscana Italia. And this was a few years ago, so maybe they refined the process and maybe this was just a bad batch or something, but they smell fishy for sure. No doubt about it. Um, another issue on why they don't use Cordovan for work boots is they just don't hold eyelets the same way. Part of it's because it's so thin, part of it's because it's, uh, it just has different properties. It, it, it's, it doesn't, it's almost like it doesn't stretch, but it's, I don't know how to put it into words. Like it, I guess, yeah, I guess it just kind of, it stretches more than a really thick piece of leather. And it, and it just, it actually, you know what it is? It's similar to this kinking because it doesn't stretch a ton, but it really takes a memory really fast and easily. It seems like the eyelets get really loose and they're spinning. You know, you can see I, I can spin that one. And that's, that's not that big of a deal because it's not like any of them pulled out, but it is a big reason why you don't see work boots in Cordovan, aside from the price, because it just, it just isn't as strong of a leather. And that's not even a diss on Nyx or anything, it's just the leather and how this style of boot was made out of the leather, combining cordovan plus a work boot, you know, you're just gonna have some flaws like that. The eyelets did discolor in a weird way. I don't know what that is, because they're like silver, so... I wonder if it was nickel plated, then brass plated, and there's brass underneath. 
I guess we'd see. Let me scratch a little bit off and try not to cut the cord in. Yeah, so there's brass underneath. <laughs> I for sure just scratched the cord in. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just a weird batch of brass eyelets. Another issue that I think is really interesting is, and this this was something we talked about on Stitch Down podcast about the fit, like we were talking about the 55 last and how I was like, hey, I think they're exactly the same last because I've been up to those factories and they're like, yeah, it's the same last and they look the exact same. But uh, I was talking to, I think, Ben from Stitch Down. He's like, no, they're different. White, White says a different 55 than Nick's does. And it still could be true, but I think honestly what's happening is when they trim the insole as it's attached to the last, they just take a knife and trim it around. And so if you're, if you're angled a little more, a little bit less, it's gonna be wider, it's gonna be a little bit shorter. And so you can see that's exactly what's happened here because this boot is a little bit more narrow and pointy. This boot is a little bit wider and fits me a little bit better. It's the same boot, same last, same day they were made, I'm assuming, but just because they're trimmed a little bit differently, the toe shape looks just slightly different. And then you can also see right here on the toe, I dropped the pipe on them like the first like couple weeks I was wearing them. I don't even know if you can see it on screen. I'll try to get you, well, that's not on autofocus, so that doesn't matter. Yeah, you can see I dropped the pipe right on it. Whoops. Put a nice dent in it. Um, that's another part of this cordovan is it's a little bit more fibrous than Corween's and it might be because they're trying to get more yield out of the hide and they were trying to optimize the pattern on the hide. But you can see here at the, at the bend points, it kind of frays in a really strange way and gets, gets kind of fibrous, especially here on this hill counter. You can see on this panel here, it's a lot more fibrous like regular leather. So it probably just wasn't all the way down to the shell. Um, you see, I've dropped like lots of junk on this. There's like stains. Cause I just don't like stressing about taking care of my boots and be like, they have to be perfect. I don't want to get a single stain on like their boots at the end of the day, like just wear them, especially with the big old like logger heel. I'm not going to baby these things, but I've definitely beat them up. You can see all the scratches, the scars. I, I almost cut through something at one point here. So they're, they're pretty beat up, but it, so it did withstand that that beating up pretty well. And you'll be able to see in the after how this all looks after it's all buffed down and how much it lays all these little issues down flat. Next con that I've experienced with these is the sole is, is delaminating. This might've been, I feel like I was in some like uh, solvent one day and that from like working on a, a bike or something and it might've hit the sole, but yeah, they're both, the, the soles are delaminating. But the, the cool thing is, you know, people, some people are like, oh, these screws are just for show. They don't do anything. Well, clearly those screws have kept this outsole in place because it's, it's pretty delaminated, but it hasn't really caused any real issues. So either it was glued wrong or I stepped in something nasty that eroded the glue. But either way, um, that's what's happening. And, but I'm sure if Nick, if this happened early on, and I, I was like, hey, Nick, if you fix this, they'd be like, yeah, we'll take care of it. I just don't care and we can fix it in the shop anytime we need to. So, uh, what else? <laughs> Another thing is these things are so heavy. They're so ridiculously heavy because it's got that really thick rubber midsole and a really thick leather midsole. You know, it's just a heavy boot with a lineman patch on it. I, I'll go weigh them, see how much they are. They are just under three pounds, two pounds, 14 ounces. So heavy. And you feel it on the trail, like they're, they're pretty heavy boots. And you know, that's, that's pretty much it. I think that's kind of the pros and the cons. You can see how much I've actually worn these and how much they've been beaten up. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I kind of wanted to update you guys on. This is built on their H and W last. So it's a little bit wider, but even still, like I like their months and last more cause it doesn't squish my big toe, but this is this, I like this heel height more. I like the, the, the shape of the toe more. Um, so I ended up being a really fancy like work boot. So ultimately, why does Cordovan, why do you never see Cordovan in work boots? Well, it's because it's just not a work boot leather. It's really, it it molds too fast. It doesn't hold its structure. It sometimes smells fishy. It, um, it is tough, but it's never gonna be as tough as like a big old slab of like three millimeter leather. You know, this stuff's pretty thin at, not that thin, I guess. Somewhere between two and 2.5 millimeters thick. And so it's just not a work boot leather at the end of the day. And that's why you never see them in work boots and they're expensive and, um, but you can do it from time to time and they turn out really cool. So 
let's go shine these up and I'll show you the before and after because you'll be shocked at how much better they look just from like a quick buffing on the, on the line finisher. So we'll be back. All right, I've got it sanded, but our neighbors just had the entire like 30 man SWAT team called on them. FBI, open up! And uh, that was wild. Not that you care, but that was crazy. Like 20 feet away, like two, like actually like five unmarked cop cars pull up and like 30 dudes from around the corner holding guns. And that was freaky. I thought for sure a uh, stray bolt was gonna hit one of us. But anyway, I, <laughs> I polished them off like off my game because it was so crazy. So I took them back to the back of the shop, put a little wax on them, put it on the line finisher and just did a quick buffing. You know, it took me maybe five or six minutes is all it took. And oh, oh the other camera's not even running. Hold up. Now for the, the grand reveal. Look at these. Isn't this crazy? Well, the B roll is going to show it a lot better because I don't have great light in here. But look at that. It's crazy how much the cordovan shines up. It's a near mirror finish just from a quick line finish. And like, I didn't even like put a ton of time into these little crevices and cracks and stuff. You know, all I did was just hit it with the horsehair brush a few times, put it on the line finisher, and they are just like a mirror finish. And I kind of like the fact you can see all the little issues and stuff I've dropped on them, especially this one over here. This one is a better looking one. You can see like on the toe where I've dropped that pipe on it, like right after wearing them, all the little scratches and scars and chunks taken out. So it is tough leather. It's just not work boot leather for any in any way. And it was still a in, really interesting experiment because there's a lot of people that, that haven't tried anything like this where like, Corvin's the best thing in the entire world. Like if every boot was made out of Corvin, it'd be the best boot ever forever and, and for the rest of our lives. But clearly making a work boot out of Corvin, Nick's, uh, I think we kind of unintentionally ran this test really. It proves to me that it's just not a work boot leather. And at the same time, it still proves that Cordovan is still this mystical, magical leather that I love because of all these attributes and the fact that you can just take this old beat up boot that I've been hiking in and working in and in a matter of five minutes, it's like a brand new looking, well-worn boot. So it definitely takes the abuse and shines up really well. It's just not a work leather. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think a uh, cool little experiment. Now we know and um, I can't even think of anything. That SWAT team completely threw me off my game, but but you can even even in over here you can see that that rough cordovan how it's laid flat. You can see that pebbled texture, and still smells like fish. So let me know what you guys think. What other stuff you want us to experiment with? Other ideas? You know, maybe we do like a raw shell cordovan on one boot, and a highly finished and dyed one on the other, or like uh, Toscano Italia. <laughs> I don't know the freaking brand's name and versus Horween or Shinky versus Horween. I think there's a lot of really cool things we could do. So support this if you can, you know, subscribe, like this video, do whatever, because I love doing this kind of stuff. This is like, this is like the deep side of the channel that I really, really enjoy. And it's hard to do because like, you know, Corvin's so expensive and it's, it's on our second channel. So whatever support you guys can give, we appreciate it. And thank you so much for supporting this. And let's hope we don't get swatted next. So see you guys.